Hello. Good morning. I know it's a little chilly, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, this should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours of it, that's for sure. Jesus. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. We got another one tomorrow. <laughs> Keep the good times rolling. Okie dokie. A couple minutes here, it looks like. Twelve people in the waiting room. I'm sure there'll be more coming. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Can we let the people in? Mother. Oh, Here they come. Okay. Let's do it. You ready to go, Mary? Alex or Parker, whoever's running the meeting here. Good morning. Good morning. Yep. Okay, we're good to go. Yep. Okay. Um, I will call to order the Malibu City Council Administration and Finance Subcommittee. Uh, meeting for Monday, May 2nd at 10 a.m. This meeting will be held via teleconference only in order to reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19 and pursuant to AB 361 and the County of Los Angeles Public Health Officer Orders. All votes taken during this teleconference meeting will be by roll call vote and the vote will be publicly reported. No physical location from which members of the public may observe the meeting and offer public comment will be provided. Please view the meeting, which will be live streamed at malibucity.org forward slash video or malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting. Members of the public are encouraged to submit email correspondence to mlinden at malibucity.org before the meeting begins. Members of the public may speak during the meeting through the Zoom application. You must first sign up to speak before the item you would like to speak on has been called, and then you must be present in the Zoom conference to be recognized. Okay. Um, please visit malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting and follow directions for signing up to speak or to download the Zoom application 
we will be taking raised hands today as well. Just adding that on personally. Um, can we have roll call, please? I'm here. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't realize I had muted myself. Councilmember Pearson? Yes. Councilmember Yering? Here. You have a quorum. Okay, can we have a motion for approval of the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. I will second it. Okay. Councilmember Yering? Yes. Councilmember Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. Excellent. Can we have a report on the posting of the agenda? This agenda was properly posted on April. 28th, 2022. Excellent. Um, we are now at item 3A, approval of minutes from April 11th, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I will second that motion. Thank you. Council Member Yearing? Yes. Council Member Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. We're now at item 3B, fiscal year 22-23 general fund grants. Um, do we need to start with a report? Ruthie, Ruthie you're uh, muted. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to provide a very brief presentation introducing the item this morning. Uh, good morning again, Council Members Pearson and Yuring. We're pleased to be with you here this morning, a variety of staff members, myself, and of course, members from the community at the subcommittee meeting regarding the general fund grants for next fiscal year. In the proposed budget for 22-23, $150,000 is allocated for this grant program. The application period was open until March 31st, 2022. And I'd like to also thank Parker Davis for shepherding um, the program through and particularly for uh, his outreach and his assistance with our applications uh, respectively. We received 30 grant applications totaling 10 million $439,600. This morning, we'll hear from the applicants who have chosen to participate to give their brief comments to um, the council members this morning. The committee will then deliberate and provide a recommendation, which will be included in the proposed bu budget public hearing scheduled on May 23rd. Based on the council's final actions in June, grant award agreements will be provided to the respective applicants um, July 1st, 2022. So at this time, we're happy to uh, hand the meeting back over and have the applicants provide you with uh, their opportunity to, to speak. Um, and I believe Mary will be reading the names of the folks who have signed up this morning. Thank you. I will do that. Thank you, Ruthie. Thank you, Ruthie. Uh, so we have 17 speakers um, signed up this morning's meeting. The first three are Tally Hutcherson, Ellen Shane, and Michael Shane. So Ms. Hutcherson, if you're available. Is she in the meeting, Parker? I don't see her in the meeting. Okay, she signed up later a second time, so we'll come back to her. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Ellen Shane. I see Michael is Ellen. No, Michael, it's doing... Ellen. I mean, I'm on our, our Zoom is on his name, but it's me. Okay. Thank you, Ellen. Go ahead. Okay. Um, do I put my video or it's okay to just speak and hear me? <laughs> just Just go ahead and speak. Okay, I will. Well, first, I just want to, a couple things. I want to thank the city for considering a grant every year for us. Since we began our nonprofit charity, um, you have been incredibly supportive, and we are very grateful. Uh, for those of you, I'm sure you know, and it's in our narrative, but just to repeat, um, we're founded and based here in Malibu. We help students right here at Malibu Middle School, in addition to sites across the city. Um, our C program, it's called the SEA C program. Basically what we do is children in the mainstream middle school classroom who are at risk of failure and who can't afford help. That's where we step in. And it's a very comprehensive program. This is not just homework help. This is a program where we focus on the subjects where they have difficulty 
It's one-on-one, -on -one, very individualized. So the mentor tutor, who is typically a university student and thus a great role model, can understand what's going on. Why is the child struggling? Are they below grade level? What don't they understand? Is there a different way to explain it? All of that contact with teachers. It's very involved. Uh, in addition, there's an emphasis on organizational skills and study skills. So it's a very comprehensive program. We put it together with Jean Bream, who taught in um, middle school for over 40 years. Uh, I just want to mention really quickly that, you know, I have this little quote here that research indicates the habits and patterns that are set in middle school are going to forecast a lot of what happens going forward in the future of student success in school. Why is success in school important? It's your ticket to your future, to opportunities in your future. And what we try to instill in these children is to understand that to have whatever they're going to do, whether it's college, community college, a trade, um, an apprentice to someone, whatever it is, you absolutely need to finish middle school and high school. So that's our focus. Um, just to highlight the funds that we've received, we thank you for the grant last year, meant mostly to operating our Malibu site. We had incredible success this year so far. Uh, one of our students actually from Malibu spoke at our fundraiser, which was held um, just last week, and um, oh, excuse me, on the twenty on the twenty first. And it was a Malibu student who spoke, who's done amazingly well. She started with Fs. She now still has one that's almost a D, but she's greatly improved. She's passionate. She's reengaged in school. She's motivated. Another student came um, up. She had uh, four failing grades. They're all Bs now. Um, and it's not just about the grades. It's about the coaching and the mentorship that inspires these students to understand how important it is that their efforts now and getting caught up now is so important for them. So um, I just I just wanted to, to highlight that. I just wanna also say that because of the pandemic, we really suffered, we had to cancel fundraisers, things are just coming back. And even the fundraiser we just had, uh, we did well, but the attendance was way, way below, sorry about my phone, we, the, the attendance was way below uh, what it had been in the past probably for a variety of reasons. Um, and so the bottom line is, as with most nonprofits, we subsist from year to year and look forward to the opportunities for grants and fundraisers and other ways to hopefully help us continue. The city, you have helped us to reach our 10 year mark. This is our 10th year of operation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. helping us make it possible. Thank you, Alan. Okay. The next, so I, I'm going to assume that Michael is not speaking. Francesca McCaffrey. Hi, thank you so much. Glad to be here. And um, this is Francesca from the Children's Life Saving Foundation. And we are really, really pleased to um, send in another grant this year for our Camp for All program. We're so, so excited to be back in operation. We're gonna see over 850 kids um, all underserved youth from different school districts in LA. We choose the lowest income school districts. Um, it's going to be an absolutely wonderful program. We were able to have our surf camps thanks to you guys last year, and it was a huge success. And we're going to have two components this year again, our wilderness camps at King, Ran King Gillette Ranch and our surf camps at Zuma Beach. Um, and we just can't wait to be back in action. As you guys know, after the pandemic, these kids need to be outside more than ever. These are children that never get to experience, you know, even simple things like the beach and going on hikes. That it, It's just such, such an important service. And we've been in, you know, the city of Malibu, as you guys know, has have been an enormous help to us. We've been in operation for almost 30 years. We've seen over 75,000 youth through this program. And it's just so essential we get, we get back out there this summer. So we know how crucial the program is. We've, we've seen it work and uh, we just wanna thank you guys again. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you. The next speaker is Eduardo Del Senor. 
Hello. Hello. Hi, Eduardo, go Hi. ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you, Can you see me? No, we don't. We don't need to see you. Just go ahead and start. I'm I'm very pretty, actually. They are called They are called to peace. Um, foundation uh it's a group of musicians and uh, grammy nominated oscar award winning artist that has put together a platform of artistic expression to help promote and raise funds for other charities and organizations that um, are focused on the protection of nature human rights and understanding the celebration of cultural differences uh, this is the first time that we apply for this. An example of uh, what we do uh, happened on April 23rd at the City Hall. Uh, we organized and performed a concert together with the Malibu High School Orchestra to raise funds for the students that were invited to go to Carnegie Hall next year, and they could not, uh, they cannot afford uh, to pay for it. Um, uh, Mayor uh, Paul Grisanti was there. Uh, he seemed to be uh, uh, touched by what was going on there in a very good way. Uh, Ellen Shane was present uh, for part of it. Um, I think uh, it's a really good example of what we can do. We are uh, we're very well versed uh, musicians with a lot of uh, uh, long careers. And, and we spend uh, our musical approach through opera, world music, jazz, Brazilian jazz, and, uh, and, the, and we do it very well. And uh, so I think music prepares the, the environment to present a message for the benefited or organizations to present their work and, and people have more attention to, uh, they, they can pay more attention to what is being presented. So um, there is a lot of potential about this. I, I uh, originally presented a, a 18 series, 18 concert series, uh, the first one was approved and it happened and it was very successful. So that's, uh, that's pretty much what I have to say. I'm keeping it simple. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Appreciate it. Next is Jennifer Brent. Yeah. Before Jen Eduardo was with the Friends of, Mel Mel Friends of Music. The Call the Peace Foundation. Call the Peace Foundation. Ah, okay, got you. I'm sorry. And is Jennifer Brent in the meeting? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. Yeah, she's. Really, I can see her. She's <laughs> smiling, waving her hand. Oh, there she no, is. No, never mind. Video's over. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Brent. I'm the executive director of California Wildlife Center. And I will, first and foremost, I want to thank you for past support that the city has given us. Um, we've serviced the city of Malibu since 1998. And in those years, we've helped over 65,000 native California animals um, and continue to serve over 4,300 annually. Um, we receive about 35,000 calls each year, which result in about 200,000 text messages that our volunteers and staff manage. Um, we help um, rescue all of the marine mammals along the coast of Malibu uh, and seabirds. Um, the services that we um, give to the city of Malibu costs California Wildlife Center over $300,000 annually. We are licensed through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as well as U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the California Fish and Wildlife Departments. Um, because of course, it's not just marine mammals, it's everything from humming, hummingbirds, uh, mockingbirds, coyotes, skunks, you name it, native wildlife, um, we help in the city of Malibu and for all of Southern California. All of these services we provide at no cost to the finders. Um, and it's through the support of people like the city of Malibu and um, generous donations that we're able to continue this work. So thank you so much for past support and we hope that we will be able to be included in this coming fiscal year as well. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, next up is Jenny Rusinko with Malibu Aquatics Foundation. Okay, great. I know I saw her there earlier. I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, we can, yes. thank you. 
Okay, thank you so much. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jenny Rusinko, and I am on the board for the Malibu Aquatics Foundation, which is the funding and governing body for the Malibu Seawolf Swim Team and the Malibu Masters Swim Program. And I'm also here today as a community member and a parent of three children who swim on the Malibu Seawolves team. Our family joined the Seawolves in September 2018, and we all know that turned out to be an eventful autumn for Malibu. At that time, the Sea Wolves was privately run by its founder, Max Javen. Despite the setback of the Woolsey fire, losing many displaced families from the team and continuous pool closures, the Sea Wolves team survived. This was thanks to the dedicated efforts of two Malibu parents who took over the team from Max Javen and founded the Malibu Aquatics Foundation. Then the pandemic hit and again, the Malibu Aquatics Foundation kept the Sea Wolves and the Masters swim programs going. We did receive uh, general grant funds in 2020 to help us keep our coach during the lockdown. And we're really grateful for that. Um, coach Eric is really a treasure and we're, we're so lucky to have him. Um, let's see, after overcoming these significant obstacles, the team is thriving with wait lists for most sessions and the master's program is also well attended. Uh, we have applied for general grant funds this year to aid us in further developing the competition sector of the Seawolves team by offering stroke clinics and other special training opportunities. Many of our highest level swimmers are looking beyond high school with the hope of college swim opportunities. To assist and support them, we would like to bring in coaches who can run such specialized clinics. We've already spoken to the Pepperdine swim head coach and we have a stroke clinic scheduled with her for May 14th. Additionally, we are seeking general grant funds to provide need-based scholarships. Right now, uh, we are lucky to partner with the city of Malibu who offers 30% need-based scholarships. Our session fees range from $450 to $650 every three months. And for some families, even 70% of those session fees is still not doable. And as a parent of three swimmers, I know that $1,800 every three months to keep my kids on the team really does strain the budget. The Malibu Aquatics Foundation would like to make participation on the Seawolves team an option for all families, regardless of financial constraints. So the Malibu City General Grant funds would be directly returned to the community in the form of these scholarships. Uh, so just to summarize, the Malibu Aquatics Foundation serves the Malibu community by offering year-round swim fitness and training for school age to age 99 and beyond through the master's program. And we also support our county and state lifeguard programs by offering JG training opportunities during our spring session. Mr. Seiko, your time is up. Oh, shoot. Okay. That's just, okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, next up is James Obradovic. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes can. Hello, thank you. Uh, my name is James Obradovic and I represent Esperance Center. I'm the director. Um, we've been in the community since 1982. Uh, we are a nonprofit that works with individuals with developmental disabilities, uh, primarily epilepsy, epilepsy and autism. We have a home over in Malibu West that we've been at since 1984. And really, this is our first time actually applying for, uh, you know, grant relief in a long time uh, with the city. But um, we are asking for money uh, for our staff. Our staff have all drive from outside Malibu. Um, unfortunately, the wages um, that we're able to provide for them are very close to minimum wage, a little bit above. So right now they're really getting hammered on gas costs and it's causing a big, um, you know, it's one of those disruptions that we don't want to disrupt the service we provide for our clients uh, because people are struggling to fill up at the pump. So um, we don't actually have any staff other than our live-in manager who um, is in Malibu. We have staff who come from as far as Silmar, uh, Oxnard, the greater Los Angeles area, and they do a tremendous job working with our individuals. Um, they do such a good job. And, you know, I'm very proud that we don't have the turnover that a lot of places have um, in this industry. But with that being said, uh, it's definitely a challenge right now um, because of the wages that we're able to offer 
um, these employees and uh, the high price of gas right now. So um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, like I said, it's a pleasure to be on here. I want to thank you guys for having me. And um, that's it. Thank you, James. Thank you. All right. I, sorry, I haven't been announcing people in order. Our next three will be Jarrell Jones, Pamela Felstead, and Oscar Mondragon. So, Jarrell Jones. Kind of. Is that possibly Uncle Jones? I have a. Jarrell Jones, are you there? You should be unmuted, but I don't hear yeah. anything. Okay. Right. We will come back. But we'll I circle think, back. Oh, I think we hear him now. No, was that not him? I don't hear anything. I don't hear anybody. We'll come back. Okay. Uh, Pamela Felstead. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Hi. I'm Pam Feldstead. I am the fifth grade chair of the Malibu Women's Club. And I'm filling in today for Aya Yoshida, who's our president, but she could not attend, but she wrote a nice letter. So I thought I would just read her letter that has all the information in it. Um, Dear council members, O-Ring Pearson and the staff members of the city council. Thank you for considering Malibu Women's Club's request for a grant again this year. Last year, we were granted $1,500, which was extremely helpful. Um, every year for the past 60 years, we invite all the fifth, eighth, and 12th grade Malibu students to participate in our contest, which is it's a multimedia essay contest. We invite all the fifth, eighth, and 12th grade students to address, or this year we invited all the fifth, eighth, and 12th grade students to address drought or climate change in some creative form of a public education campaign. And we awarded the $1,500 grant as part of the total 7,200 that was awarded to the participating students. On Earth Day, a few days ago, Malibu Women's Club rented the Outdoor Legacy Park to resume our in-person celebration, where the students were handed their certificates and checks as their parents and their teachers watched and applauded. And the principals were there too. It was nice, but we hope to, re to be able to resume our annual awards luncheon, which also supports all local community restaurants when the pandemic is over. The smiling faces of our winning students and the thank yous from their parents inspire us to keep encouraging students year after year to enjoy learning and thinking and to be creative and productive. To keep this wonderful Malibu community tradition going, we really need the support of the city of Malibu. Thank you very much for taking the time to consider Malibu Women's Club as a worthy grant recipient. Sincerely yours, Aya Yoshida, president of the Malibu Women's Club. So Thank that's, you. yeah, that's. Thank you, right. Pam, appreciate it. And we, I think we received the letter earlier too. So thank you. Okay, next is Oscar Mondragon. Hi, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Oh, good. Good to everyone working every year. Uh, we've been uh, from Malibu, as you may know, for the last uh, almost 30 years, always depending on how we get from different, different people, but primarily from the, from the city of Malibu. And we're so proud that we uh, always uh, get your help. Uh, throughout these years. Uh, you may know that our mission is uh, really to better the lives of laborers and their families through a dignified and safe hiring site. 
And in the same context, we also make sure that the employers, when they call it, might have a sense of, of uh, um, feeling feeling okay, they are feeling good, they, they are contacting us and they say uh, uh, with the workers that we send. Get to give you some figures, um, in the quarter of 2019, we had about uh, 2118 uh, job seekers and out of them, about 9,990 got jobs. About 935 were male and female about 55. As a comparison for the, the fourth quarter of 2021, we had about 2,601 workers. Uh, a lot of uh, jobs that were found was about 1,700 plus. Um, we also get a lot involved with the community, especially for English uh, uh, training and lately also for fire uh, 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 training for the workers that can be part of the solution when they are there either cutting grass or clean somebody's house and this is, they see something, they might need some, some help. Um, we are so grateful to the Pepperdine University because they always send us um, students to be able to teach English to the workers. Um, we also have... Um, we have a, a, a program, well, actually our daily, our daily uh, uh, schedule is from 6.30, 7 to about uh, 1 o'clock in the, in the, in the uh, afternoon. That is uh, six days a week. We always hear that we're sick or we cannot come or there's an accident, God knows what. And with this an accident, we're always trying to get around so we can come here and, and be of service. And that is basically what we do, be of service to the workers, to the community, to be able to contribute uh, to have a better community. That's why the training provider, that's why training when there is a problem with uh, rains, although they, unfortunately we haven't gotten that much rain these days, but fires we have. So we appreciate all the help you have given us all these years. And just to thank you because again, we were a product of a, a Malibu uh, city decision to help homeless and at the same time, help the laborers and help primarily his residents. So we thank you deeply from our hearts. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Okay, and I think I saw that uh, Jarrell Jones was able to log on. So if we can hear from Jarrell. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Good morning, it's a pleasure to be in touch. So, I am representing Find Homeless People, Inc. What we do is we, primarily in Los Angeles County and Orange County, we organize outreach efforts where our board of directors, we at, we're a smaller organization of just four total directors, but we have eight volunteers that help us deliver and distribute essential goods to homeless people. So we go out to locations that are highly impacted like Skid Row um, and in, encampments that could be anywhere in the city. And we hand out things like brand new clothes, blankets, socks, food could be fresh that you know, we're in touch with food banks and restaurants. And it could also be very shelf stable things, um, water, hygiene kits that include things like hand sanitizers to protect against things like COVID. And we have been funded out of pocket because we are a newly approved organization. We really started in 2019, but when the pandemic started, we did what we could to scale up our efforts. Currently we've assisted 13,000 people. We, we just passed 13,000 to about 13.2 at the moment, people that we've actually assisted. And we not only hand out these goods, but we do physical and mental health assessments on them. And at our website, findhomelesspeople.org, there's an extensive list, what we consider the largest list of free resources available to these people. Depending on their circumstances, after we've assessed them, we point them towards the best resources for them, whether that's interim or permanent housing, um, other forms of shelter, food, and other resources. We are building a, we actually have at the moment, 
we've built a proprietary AI database that can be searched by anyone if you are looking for someone that's homeless. And if we've encountered them, you may find a profile for them. So what we do is ultimately we reconnect people with their families and friends that are searching for them. We're search, we need additional funds so that we can try to help more people faster. In the city of Malibu, we understand that areas like marketplaces surrounding grocery stores, parks, beaches, common motorways are impacted. So we, we're here to really try to beautify the city and relocate people, try to help them find interim and permanent housing options to just live a better life. So we appreciate this. We haven't ever applied because we're a newly approved 501c3, but you know, we're here. We just wanted to thank you for the opportunity for letting us apply for funding. That thank you, Jura. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have Teresa Berry, then Casey Ernest, and Kareen Alhardan. So, Teresa Berry. Yes. Go ahead, we can hear you. I, you can hear me, oh good. Okay, um, well, I'm the president and CEO of Barry Key Foster Corporation and <clears throat> um, I come from a background of teaching. I've worked for LA City over 20 years. I was an elementary school teacher. Uh, part of that time I was on maternity leave and substituting, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I am a senior and um, the technology is a little challenging <laughs> for me, but anyway, um, I do have a bilingual competency in Spanish. Um, it wasn't until after I had a number of health issues that I started uh, worrying for my own kids. I was a single parent with six children and uh, not able to continue working. And I was concerned that my kids were gonna land up in foster care. <clears throat> um, by the grace of God, they didn't. Um, we were able to stay under the same roof and they all um, have independent and successful lives. And I just, um, during that period when I was single parenting and um, challenged, one of my sons seemed to find uh, young men, it, as it happened, that were living on the streets in Agora Hills where I was trying to raise my family. And <clears throat> One of the boys that particularly impressed me was uh, the youngest of four brothers that were put into the foster care system after his parents went through a divorce in Louisiana and his mom brought them to California where he had an older sister and she left these boys there. Um, the older sister was busted for drugs and the four boys went into foster care and um, at this point in time, when I met the young man, he was the youngest of the four, and he was 18 and had just aged out of the system and didn't really have a clue how, how to survive in the real world. And it was just, um, it broke my heart. He knew his three older brothers, he had knowledge that one of them was shot and killed, but the other two, he had no idea where they were. He had no support. He couldn't even contact his you know, the siblings that he went into foster care with. Um, and I just thought if there was any way that I could help kids in the foster care system, especially sibling groups, if I could take sibling groups and apply some of the uh, techniques that I had been complimented for um, during my teaching experience, I, I would love to apply some of these techniques of incentive and and caring and individualization to the children and help them to grow up with self-esteem and confidence and not end up on the streets like some of my previous um, applicants for, for different um, 
Ms. Barry, your time is up. Thank you, to, thank you, Terry. Okay, next is Kareen Alhardan. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Oh, that's okay. It's Karen Alhardan. And sorry, I haven't, I, I wasn't that's able okay. to change my name. No, uh, that's okay. I, okay. I saw you in there. <laughs> uh, well, first, I'd, I, first off, I'd like to thank the city for their ongoing efforts in establishing an independent Malibu school district. I, I'm speaking in support of a grant request from the John L. Webster Elementary School PTA. I'm this year's fundraising chair for the Webster PTA, and I thought it would be helpful to provide a bit more context around our request and, and to appeal for your support. Um, for the past three years, since the Santa Monica Malibu Ed Foundation dropped support for Malibu schools and became the Santa Monica Ed Foundation, it has fallen to the Malibu school PTAs to raise funds to maintain status quo in terms of staff and staffed programs at our schools, a total of about $400,000 a year across our Malibu schools, in addition to raising the funds that the PTA uses to fill the enrichment gaps of the district. Uh, the school PTAs are a group of rotating volunteer parents who focus on improving the lives of children in Malibu by building and maintaining a strong school community. These parents are not professional fundraisers and the burden of this fundraising over the years has, has really been significant. We've had to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars above and beyond um, what we what we typically do, uh, the, and the school communities are we're working together to establish a centralized fundraising entity to replace MEF, um, but better, uh, in order to se secure that funding for staff and staffed programs. Um, but until that fund is established, possibly this year, we need help in securing the funding to maintain our instructional aids um, to simply maintain the status quo. So for Webster Elementary, the cost of our seven instructional aids for the next school year is $120,000. We have done well with our fundraising um, and a, a shout out to Mayor Paul Grisanti and Councilwoman Karen Farrar for their donation to our recent Jogathon, but we still have a $37,000 gap and the school year is drawing to a close. So we're asking for a grant of $24,000 to help us to close that gap and to keep the seven instructional aides at Webster who are really part of our community. Um, we need to deliver the funds to support the aides or commit them by July. And if we don't have the funds, we lose the aides. Um, great schools benefit Malibu overall, whether or not you have children in the school system, the PTA supported the launch this year of a composting program at Webster. We found a way to bring arts into the school when the district wouldn't fund it. We launched a STEAM lab a few years ago, and all of these programs would not be possible for our teachers to embrace without the help of our instructional aides. Great schools attract families, raise property values, and contribute to the betterment of Malibu's youth and to our world. So please consider approving Webster PTA's grant request of $24,000 to help keep our seven instructional aides for the next school year. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Okay, our next, uh, last, we have four more speakers. Sarah Grisanti, Casey Ernest, Ann Russell Shergo, and James Grasso. And so then Tally's here also, the first speaker. Oh, okay. We'll put her, him or her at the end. Um, so Sarah Grisanti. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Sarah Grisanti. I'm going to be speaking for Friends of Malibu Urgent Care, which is a nonprofit organization who, with the help of grants and donation, gives Malibu Urgent Care Clinic the money it needs for to stay open extra hours every day and all day on the weekends. Uh, we also help to pay for much needed in-house laboratory and diagnostic and life-saving equipment that they use every day at the clinic. 
Uh, we have two wonderful new emergency room doctors, Dr. Katz and Dr. Lauren Pike, uh, who have fire in their bellies to make the clinic the state of the art facility that Malibu deserves. Briefly, let me give you a couple of examples of their care. My neighbor, uh, Phil Freckman, uh, went to Malibu Urgent Care with a bad headache. This was last year. While he was checking in and speaking with the nurses, Dr. Katz overheard him and called him in immediately to be uh, examined. Uh, Dr. Katz realized he was having a sub arachnal hemorrhage, which is basically an aneurysm. And he called, Dr. Katz called UCLA and set up a surgeon to meet him there, uh, uh, meet Dr. Fra Frackman there and did immediate surgery to save his life. And Dr. Frackman is a pediatric surgeon that we would have lost otherwise. Another friend, uh, Linda Marzalek, was out in her garden in a weekend where we wouldn't be open unless Malibu Urgent Care was open. She was uh, gardening with a shovel and long story short, her, she almost lost her foot and went in and Dr. Pike spent several hours sewing her toe back on. These are, uh, there's so many more stories. These are just two people that popped into my head. Malibu Urgent Care Clinic is where Malibu goes for trained certified emergency room doctors and not nurse practitioners. Uh, please be generous with your grant so we can continue the care that Malibu deserves. Uh, and thank you very much for your time and last year's grant was greatly appreciated. We hope that you will uh, support us even more this year. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. and. Um, I see we've got two people who have raised their hands and I know they both want to speak. So I'll add Merlin Clark and Susan Tellum at the end. So you can take your hands down. Thank um, you, Mary. Our next speaker is Casey Ernest. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity once again to join um, our council members and our wonderful community members. Um, I wanna thank the city for its ongoing partnership and delivery of programs and services um, for our community at large and for our public school children. The Boys and Girls Club continues to be focused on three primary areas. That is social connectedness for our youth and community through our programs and services um, after school, um, drug prevention and education for our middle school and high school populations um, through our partnership on campus at Malibu Middle and High School, as well as the delivery of vital mental health services um, for our youth, families, and community at large. I'd like to again thank the city for um, partnering with us to provide after school enrichment. At the end of this academic school year, we will have supported 16 classes and four workshops at both Malibu Elementary and Webster schools, the total number of TK through fifth graders served is approximately 300. That's nothing short of phenomenal coming out of a pandemic and shows truly that our kids want to be engaged in enrichment. Um, with regards to mental health services, during the pandemic, we amplified um, everything that we had to offer through our licensed programs. And we continue to provide free, no cost mental health services to all Malibu public school children and their family through an MOU with the district. Additionally, um, we added a social services team, which we continue to um, you know, amplify and work with the community. This team supports the community at large, um, which includes our aging and adult population. We support them with everything from filing important documents with social security to helping with computer and technology challenges, ensuring access to county services when appropriate. When needed, our team performs home visits and wellness checks for those that are no longer able to drive or come to our offices. We provide individual counseling and therapy for those who live or work in Malibu that would not otherwise have access to help. We've been providing services to those that are new to the community and are monolingual Spanish speaker with high needs. Again, we thank the city for its ongoing partnership and support as we continue to expand our services, 
reaching those who need us the most. We look forward to partnering with the city in this next year and together meeting the needs of our community. Thanks so much. Thank you, Casey. Okay, next is Ann Russell Shergo. Good morning, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you. Um, good morning, my name is Ann Shergott. Thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of the Malibu Little League in requesting a grant from the general fund. My husband, Nick Shergott is the Malibu Little League president, but he is unable to be here today. So I'm speaking on his behalf. So in recent years, uh, our league was near collapse after the Woolsey fire and during the pandemic. We were on the verge of folding into the Agora Little League. A few parents did not want this additional erosion of our community, loss for our kids, and burden to families who would have had to drive over the hill. These parents got involved. The new board noticed the facilities for our league at Bluffs Park had degraded over time, and then and the board made it a two-point goal of recruitment of participants and facilities improvement. Toward the recruitment goal, we're happy to report that the league has successfully grown from 90 children in 2020 to 247 this year, including the establishment of a strong softball program for girls. We anticipate our numbers to continue to grow. As mentioned, the board's second goal has been fundraising to create facilities that are safe for our players. To this end, the board has raised funds for fields, scoreboards, and a future snack shack remodel. One completed CapEx project was the replacement of the soil on two fields at Bluffs at the cost of $30,000. This project is complete and the investment has the potential to last a long time, but the biggest maintenance issue is proper watering. The current sprinkler system um, at Bluffs Park is not able to be adjusted or fine-tuned to the varying amounts of water needed for infield versus outfield maintenance. We would like to be considered for a general grant to use for an upgrade to the existing irrig irrigation system and add capability for the water for the infield dirt to be watered separately at a different capacity for the outfield. And in this, in this upgrade would make the $30,000 investment already paid for not be in vain. An upgrade of uh, the fields would allow us to keep the field safe for our players because without uh, proper watering, the dirt gets compacted and unsafe, which was our problem in the beginning. Um, we would like to be considered for a general fund grant. Um, and oops, this grant would go a long way toward our goal of making the Malibu City's baseball and softball facilities something the community and kids can be proud of. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ann. Okay. Next is Tally Hutcherson. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. My name is Tally Hutcherson and thank you for this opportunity. I am the program director of a Malibu based nonprofit called Cavallo Foundation. I also went to Pepperdine and graduated in 84 and have had a small business uh, doing ocean view trail rides in Malibu since that time. We put smiles on people's faces using horses as healers. I came to Malibu, uh, a young person, and uh, Cavallo Foundation is my second nonprofit. We began our work with Cavallo in 2018 and have struggled due to the Wolseley fire and the pandemic to stay viable. There is a great need due to those huge events in families to keep teens inspired and productive. In my many years of using horses as healers, I have personally witnessed horses supporting people to take positive steps to avoid drugs and other unproductive behavior. Horses naturally build communities and keep people off their devices. They create joy and a feeling of belonging. As Malibu is changing, horses are leaving the area in great numbers. We use the largely unused Malibu Equestrian Park and hope to bring new life and programs to the middle school and high school of Malibu. I have been serving the community of Malibu for 30 plus years 
using horses to connect others to nature, feeling better, and to connect them to positive experiences. Malibu invested quite a sum of money in the Malibu Equestrian Park, and it is very sad to see it empty and mostly used by people who walk their dogs in the area. There are additional opportunities for the people who participate in our program to be of service and to volunteer in future events. We are asking for the grant to fund a program a month for one year. For the past year, we have been offering a free program a month to young adults previously in foster care that have become homeless and are in programs to help them build a sustainable life through education and job skill training. I hope you will consider the Malibu kids as important as we consider them and give us the money that we need to run a program for them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tally. Okay, next is James Grasso, followed by Merlin Clark and Susan Tellum. Mr. Grasso? Uh, yes, hi, James Grasso with the Malibu Search and Rescue Team. First, thank you for your past support of our team and your continued consideration. Just quickly wanted to say a couple of things and try to keep it under three minutes. Most people think Malibu Search and Rescue is uh, sponsored and uh, uh, paid for by the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, Lost Hills in particular. It is not. We are our own 501c3. We provide most of our own equipment, both for the team and individually. We pay for our own gear as well. The Sheriff supports us with some larger items uh, like our rescue trucks. The most current truck is 14 years old and... Uh, we are made up of, we are of course are 100% volunteer, 85% are reserve uh, deputies. Uh, they get paid a dollar a year and I am a civilian volunteer specialist which makes up about 15% of the rest of the team and we don't get the dollar a year uh, either. Uh, we were formed in 1977. Most of the people on our team have been on there for, I've been on for about five years. I'm kind of the new guy. Most of the people on the team have been there for 20, 30 and 43, 44 years, some of our guys. Uh, they're extremely dedicated. Uh, Malibu is in our name for a reason because the majority of our calls uh, take place in Malibu. We are next to Yosemite Search and Rescue. We're typically the busiest team in the state. Last year, we had approximately 162 callouts for service. The majority of those uh, come in Malibu. Uh, and so that's just wanted to, to remind everybody that we do fund ourselves and we're appreciative of your past support. And uh, thank you for your continued consideration. Thank you, James. Okay, next is Merlin Clark. Hi, everyone. I, I just wanna say thank you for this opportunity. I'm really proud to be considered along with so many other organizations that are doing so much good around Malibu. Um, this is our, our first time application and uh, I'm the driver of the do good bus. I also want to thank you for letting me share my passion of creating togetherness, connecting people with each other and with the community. This is what we do at the do good bus. Our mission is to improve mental wellness through personal connection and meaningful impact. And I truly believe that our community is a key to many of our personal and society challenges we're facing. Our Do Good Bus really is a, a transformation vehicle. And after seven years, uh, 11 years of serving the LA community during the pandemic, we relocated to Malibu and are looking to really uh, create an opportunity to have a, a real impact in, in the Malibu community. Um, during our pandemic pause, we created Do Good Bus Talks, which is we take our 1971 VW bus and we can park it anywhere, businesses, uh, uh, around the community and neighborhoods. And we pull out a dozen lawn chairs, 15 lawn chairs, and we have these intimate, approachable conversations about mental health, climate reality, social justice. And what we do is we, we create uh, trust in the community and uh, an opportunity for people to 
open up and, and share and have these uh, necessary conversations. Parents have been requesting more opportunity to uh, do some of our do good bus talks with their kids and we'll use the money for this programming to create partnerships with uh, local businesses and organizations. Um, really appreciate your consideration and uh, always reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Merlin. Okay, and next is Susan Pelham. Susan Good morning. I am uh, here today on behalf of American Tortoise Rescue. I'm the executive director. We have been in Malibu for 25 years. Um, even though we lost everything in the Woolsey fire, including the Turtle Hospital and the sanctuary was took a, a terrible beating. We came back with a vengeance and um, fortunately a lot of native plants. So it's totally beautiful. We've lost uh, one of our big trees, but this too shall pass. I'm here today to um, ask for funds for our veterinary fund as we did last year. It's one of the biggest expenses that we do have um, as opposed to cats and dogs. Um, reptiles are very expensive and have to see an exotic veterinarian. So when they go in, the average bill is $500 just to see the uh, animal. And if they have to have surgery with a turtle or tortoise, as you can imagine, it's very difficult because of the shell. They actually have to cut through the shell and it's very traumatic for the turtles and tortoises. So um, that is a, a, an expense that can go as high as $5,000. Most of the funds that we do get go to people here locally um, and sometimes um, outside of the city who cannot afford turtle care with a veterinarian. Um, that's the, why we founded the Veterinary Fund a number of years ago and have been able to help a tremendous number of people um, who um, for one reason or another can't, can't uh, afford care for their animals. So um, we would be very thrilled to receive funds again this year. Um, and um, be able to help people who might lose their turtles or tortoises otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Okay, that was the last that we had, but I noticed there is one hand raised for Malibu Film Festival. Um, yep, what, council members, do you want to hear from? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to speak. My name is David Katz, and I'm here today to speak about the Malibu Film Festival, a nonprofit organization that I founded in 1997. I grew up in Malibu, and the Katz family still resides in Malibu, and we're proud to have started the Malibu Film Festival in order to support local filmmakers and up-and-coming filmmakers. The film festival typically takes place at the Malibu City Hall, which requires us to upgrade the outdated projection and AV equipment located in City Hall. And in order to do that, we bring in Dolby to certify the theater as a Dolby uh, surround sound theater. And we bring in Panasonic in order to upgrade the equipment's visual component. Uh, we are asking for a grant in order to facilitate the rental of the city's venue and the city staff fees and the associated fees to upgrade the facility in order to hold this annual community event. Thank you so much for your opportunity to speak today and the opportunity to apply for this grant. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, I believe that is the last of our speakers. Okay, then we're back here to Steve and Mike. Mikey here. Um, I guess uh, before I hand it to Steve, I'll just say I just I think people understand the situation we're in, but you know we're looking at ten point six eight two million dollars in requests. Um, even let's just say there wasn't a ten million dollar request, just to 
to lower the number, it'd be $682,000 with a $150,000 budget. So we are not in an easy situation here. And, uh, and somewhere along the way, we're just going to probably make everyone miserable to some degree, uh, not intentionally, but, um, you know, it's a tricky situation. So um, that's how I view it. Steve might view it differently, and I'll hand it over to Steve right now. Hey, thank you, Mikey. Uh, first, let me compliment all of the speakers and the organizations. Uh, it is fulfilling to understand that so many people are out there trying to do the right thing to help the community, to help other members, to help the children. Um, and, you know, if you had kept it below 10 million, we probably could have got some more money for you. But uh, once you hit the $10 million mark, I think you, you did put us in a, in a bit of a squeeze. But thank you very, very much. I did appreciate hearing from you. And it's interesting to, to learn all the different activities that are going on out there. This year, doing these grants, I've, I've tried to take a little bit different approach. Uh, and I went back when the grant program started, I believe it was supposed to be sort of an incubator fund uh, where we, you know, we took some of these small organizations, you gave them some money uh, for a couple of years and they went out and hopefully they could grow their organization, build a, a base of supporters and at some point in time, start supporting themselves uh, and, and enable them to see to go out and support different organizations every year. Somehow that got a little bit sideways over time uh, and we don't, we don't do it that way. So I, when I looked at the, the organizations this year, I tried to do a couple things. One, I looked at the small organizations and I looked at small organizations that had very limited fundraising activity over the last couple of years. I mean, there are some places in here where, you know, the organizations can raise two or three million bucks a year. Uh, and I sort of put them on the bottom of my list saying, I thought it was more important to go back and help some of these smaller guys. So that's what I did. Uh, and, and Mikey, I, you know, if, if you'd like, let me run, I can run down sort of where I think I am and we can compare notes to see where the heck it takes us. Is that okay with you? That's perfect. Okay. So let's go down the list. Adamson House. Uh, I'd like to give them the 10 grand they're looking for. The Adamson House is a historic site here in Malibu. Uh, if you go there, it really does give you a look into the past. I, I know that they've been struggling to deal with the erosion on the, on the bluff. Uh, so I'm hoping we can, we can do that. Uh, American Tortoise Rescue. Susan, uh, my wife, back when we were living in Chicago, was head of the Chicago Herpetological Society. And I understand when you talk about medical bills for reptiles and turtles, it is expensive. So I'd like to grant you the, you know, and we typically gave you like 250 or 500 bucks in prior years. I'd like to give you a one-time shot for the 2,500 and hope your, your, your medical uh, program stays up. Uh, Call to Peace Foundation. Uh, that's the one that are, it took the Malibu High School kids you know, it's practice. how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, you practice, you practice. And, and I encourage that thing to go forward. Uh, I thought they did a heck of a job. So I'd like to give them uh, $5,000. Uh, the Cavallo Foundation, you know, for, somehow in the last month or so, I started reading about people interacting with animals and how that interaction has really helped a lot of them, you know, deal with some of the problems they have. You know, whether it's horses, and there's a bunch of bunch of organizations out there that work with horses with people and that seems to be very effective you know in some of the prisons they're taking in dogs for the prisoners and that's giving them a, a different purpose inside of there so i like what they're doing and i'd like to give them ten thousand dollars uh to do 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 malibu Aqu Mal malibu aquatics i think to give them 10 grand i think that's a heck of a program you want to see that continue to go on Malibu Arts Foundation is looking to have a uh, uh, hire a program leader there. So I'd like to give them 10. Uh, Labor Exchange gets 10. Malibu Friends of Music, I'd give them five. Malibu Le Little League, I'd give them 20 grand. Malibu Search and Rescue, I'd give them 20 grand. I know they need a new car and you know, used vehicles are expensive. So that at least get them headed in that direction. Malibu Urgent Care gets 10. Malibu Women's Club gets uh, 7,500. 
Manta Publications, 3,000. Uh, John is the one that's helping us do the mailing pieces for the Dark Sky program, and I think that's important. I'd like to give Poison Tree Malibu 5 and CSA Foundation, you know, they're basically helping us pick up plastics. And I, there was an article I read uh, a week ago, what the heck it was, where I don't know whether it's a state or cities or what, what are starting to sue some of these oil companies who have been basically promising us that, you know, the plastics they were built, getting us to use could be recycled only to find out they were full of baloney. That really doesn't happen. Uh, they were telling us, you know, it was back to the old, Council for Tobacco Research, right? They're telling you one thing when the truth is entirely on the other side. So I, if having them help us clean up the plastics along the beaches, I think is a good idea. So I'd like to give them five. And when I add all those up, Mike, that comes out down to about $133,000. So I got 17 grand left. And I wanted to try and get that to the schools, but I figured let's talk about that and see where we go. But that, that would be my first cut of how I would spread this out. That's it. Sorry, I was struggling to keep up writing this all down to go through it. Um, okay, what? I'm probably going to take a little longer than you, but thanks. Um, Adams and House Foundation. My first question was there. What? Are, what's the state responsibility on that property? Isn't a state-owned property? And why? I'm just. I don't know the answer. Why are they not protecting their own property? So that was a little confused. I know there's probably a reason that I don't know, um, but that does confuse me a bit. Um, I thought I understood the state was coming in and putting in riprap. Um, I know it's a bit controversial, riprap. It has its plus and minus. I don't know the answer to that. I did I did sort of highlight 10 grand. And actually, I should, I should back up a second here. Um, I have a question, Mary. I don't know if you know the answer. Did we use all of our funds last year? I think we kept a reserve and we didn't actually use it. I'm just curious if you know the answer to that. I think we had seven, I, grand, seven grand left, Mike. That's what uh, my memory too. I don't recall, but um, we've got Ruthie and uh, Renee. That is, I that, is, that is correct. We held $7,000 in reserve. Okay. I'm um, just curious about that. And I think my second comment is, and to everybody that's here and not here that spoke, um, I agree with everything Steve said. You know, it's amazing what everyone's doing. It's amazing um, the community involvement. Um, for me, I, I just, there's, I think we're in a particularly interesting year where there is so much need. Um, it's, it's not less, it's always a lot of need. We know that, but this year feels like more. We're coming out of COVID you know, which came on top of the Woolsey fire. And, you know, I clearly, you can see a theme here of mental health um, and just need on so many different levels. So honestly, the, the, the first time, the first thought on my mind at one point was, you know, let's raise the budget for one year to 200,000. Um, I don't know if that would fly with anybody, but I just see so much need in so many different areas of the community. And now I'll go back to going through it. Um, American Tortoise Rescue. I was wearing my American Tortoise Rescue sweatshirt this morning. Um, um, and love it. Wear that a lot. Uh, I agreed with Steve. I was at, at 2,500 on that. Um, the Aurelia Foundation, they do great work. Um, I had highlighted two grand there, for what they do to help with the repair of their handicapped vehicle. Um, as far as Barry, Key, and Foster, that project feels outside our scope. It, it's $10 million is so dramatically beyond what we have any ability to put a dent in. And while I completely, completely agree on the need, I don't know at this time how, how we're going to be able to make a stab at that one. Um, I don't know enough about it. There's no, that hasn't started yet. So I don't know how to help on that one. The Boys and Girls Club of Malibu, 
provides by far the most family services for youth and families um, on so many levels. Uh, so impressed yesterday at the Dolphin Awards to see their three, uh, their three amazing humans that won Dolphin Awards for, for what they're doing. Incredible program. We gave them 90,000 last year. I have earmarked 90,000 again this year. California Wildlife Center, once again, well-established, do amazing work in Malibu, unbelievable care to uh, injured animals, et cetera. Um, I highlighted 6,000. Um, Call to Peace Foundation, I love what they're doing. New group, I love, are not new to us, new to me. Uh, youth art education, first time applicant. Uh, I'd love to support without knowing more, I, I'd highlighted 2000. You're gonna see a trend here that pretty much everybody I, I highlighted money for because it, it's just amazing what everyone's doing. Cancer Support Community LA. I don't know much about them, but I love that they also work in Malibu. Um, so I'd highlighted a thousand to try and help out there. Um, uh, the Cavalo Foundation, Equine Therapy for Youth, like Steve said, I don't need to repeat it. Amazing program. Um, I don't believe we've we've put money there before. Steve had 10,000, which I'm not mad at. I had 2,500 in my first look at it. Um, but agree, it's a great program. Children's Life Saving Foundation, know them, the amazing things they do. Um, uh, the, incredible people. Um, there are beach camps for underserved kids coming to Malibu. It's a great program. Um, I put down 5,000 for that. Um, the Do Good Bus, I know Merlin Clark. Um, I, I've been to Do Good Bus events. I've actually spoke at a Do Good Bus event. Um, they do great work, huge community connecting event or uh, events. Um, I highlighted $2,000 on that. Emily Shane Foundation. Emily was a very close friend of my daughter. I know the Shanes, no surprise. I know a lot of the people that are here. Um, great program, um, important program. That the middle schoolers is, is a very critical age. Um, I hi highlighted $2,000 the same as last year here. Um, the restaurant Esperance Center, um, I do know James a bit. We've talked a few times. They are in my neighborhood and I see the work they're doing firsthand and they are amazing neighbors. Um, incredible program. And um, I, I know the need can must be endless there. I highlighted $2,000 here to help out. Findhomelesspeople.org. Um, great program, it sounds like, but we have an outreach team. And we have a whole program of outreach with multiple organizations. So um, for, uh, I think it's Jarell, if I have it right. Sorry, I'm writing so messy, I can hardly read it. Um, I think that the correct approach to working in Malibu and this complicated and difficult issue is to go through uh, Susan Duenas. And if you can provide a service, um, that fits in with our budget, because we do spend a lot of money in this area right now. Um, I think that's the way to go there. So I did not highlight any money for that at this time. Malibu Aquatics, great program, important program. Um, I only carried forward a thousand dollars, but I see Steve thought 10. You know what? Either, you know, <laughs> there's no amount of money there that they don't deserve. Um, Malibu Arts Foundation, my question on this one was, I believe in the overall budget, um, a request was made for funds that could help with that. And I hope I'm not wrong. And I supported that in our overall budget um, for the arts program. So um, I would, I don't know how to combine it when it comes for a grant and, a, and we're talking maybe out of the general budget. So. I highlighted 2,500, but at this point, I'd like to see more funding for the arts through our general budget. Labor exchange, same as Steve. I highlighted 10 grand. 
you've been in community so long doing so much. Thank you so much. Um, Malibu Elementary School and Webster. I'll talk about them together. The Those are both our elementary schools in Malibu. I know the value of these programs. I was a parent volunteer for many years when the kids were younger um, at both at both schools, actually. Um, and um, I don't know, what I don't know is the population difference, uh, the amount of kids at each school at this point. So in my mind, if we were to give money there, I'd want it to be equitable. Um, I think the schools have been through so much, uh, but just as a rough number, I highlighted 25 grand for Malibu Elementary and 12,500 for Webster. I don't, not assuming that Malibu Elementary is twice the size of Webster, but I'm guessing it's bigger, but maybe I'm totally wrong. I have no idea. I'm um, sorry, Mikey, can you repeat those amounts? I, I missed it in my note taking. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, I just, I, I put down a first thing of 25,000 at Malibu Elementary and 12,500 at Webster. Um, for the Malibu Film Foundation, um, that's really an ask for a fee waiver. I, I'd rather that comes back as an item to council closer to the film festival in April, say in February or March. And um, so I didn't highlight anything for that now because I think applying for a fee waiver is a little bit different than a grant, in my opinion. Um, we, have, we have done fee waivers for other people as well. Um, Malibu Friends of Music, Live Chamber Music Festival, love it. I highlighted $1,000 to support that. Malibu Little League, some of my best memories growing up are playing Little League in Malibu. Um, my question here is, and I obviously don't know the answer, is that Mount Little League plays on city property at Bluffs Park. Isn't maintaining the fields part of what the city does? It appears that it's not, but I'm a little confused on that. I'm not aware that the soccer people pay to maintain the field there in any special way either. Um, so I, I wish I had an answer to this one. Um, and I doubt there's anyone on that can answer that. So I didn't highlight any money at the moment, but I'm definitely concerned with what I hear. I thought Malibu Little League, is, it's fantastic. And I want to support it, but I'm, I'm curious that field conditions, not a city responsibility. Malibu Search and Rescue, amazing program. I highlighted 12,500, Steve had 20. Once again, I'm not mad at either at his number at all. Malibu Urgent Care, I highlighted 5,000. Steve highlighted 10, once again. Um, Steve focused in on, on fewer people than I did with more money to each, typically. So I'm, once again, not mad at that. Malibu Women's Club, um, yeah, um, amazing program. Um, kind of the same, same as we've seen. I put down 2,500, Steve put down 7,500. I like his number better, but you know, just trying to figure out how to spread the dollars. Um, on Manta Publications, Steve and I agree completely. It's been great to get to know Don a bit. And uh, so that's great. Uh, Meals on Wheels, long established, great program that I've seen the impact in Malibu. I highlighted $3,500 there. Poison Free Malibu, a kind of a no brainer for the amazing things they've done. I highlighted 5,000 just as Steve did. The Sea Save Foundation, uh, once again, important program. Uh, I highlighted 2,500. Steve highlighted five. His number's great. Mine spread among more organizations. Uh, Shark Fund, last one. I, I know the challenges there at Malibu Middle School, and uh, I put down $10,000 there. Now, here's the problem with my numbers. They don't come up to $137,000, not even close. I spent way too long and struggled just to get it down to $223,000. So I'm like 90,000 or whatever it is higher than Steve um, or showing that, um, showing the reason I thought maybe we should spend 200,000 this year in a year of need. 
So those are my preliminary thoughts. Um, and um, I'll turn it back over to Steve for, for comments on. Excuse me, Councilmember Pearson. Uh, yes. Things. Number one, I missed the last couple because I was texting Jesse to see if he can hop on this meeting to answer your questions about the ball fields. Okay. Um, can you repeat for me your recommendations for Poison Free Malibu and Sea Save? 5,000 for Poison Free Malibu and 2,500 was Sea Save. Thank you. And I'll let you know if I hear from Jesse. Okay. And back to Steve. Okay, hey, thank you, Mikey. Yeah, look, this is not an easy process, especially on a Monday morning. <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, here's, here's my thought. Uh, I'd like to get more organizations in Malibu funded so we can see what they do, all right? I mean, I, it's a, you know, we've got the, the Boys and Girls Club and they, they do amazing work, uh, but I'd like to see other organizations be able to, as opposed to having just one, you'd like to have five or eight or whatever the right number is of people who are active inside the city, helping out the, 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 the various people and you know, what they need. I, I looked at the Boys and Girls Club, you know, we fund, we, they raise about 3 million bucks or something close to that. I mean, we give them this funding, we give them funding out of the library fund, uh, so, and, and at least my take was, look, they've got the ability, they, they've been established, they've got the ability to go out and, and raise the funds they need to get their job done, and if I didn't give them the 90 grand, I'm not sending any of them to the soup kitchen to eat, all right, I and mean, they still got plenty of money there that they can work with, and I don't argue they do great work, I'm just trying to figure out how I get some of these other organizations active, how I give them sort of the boost that they need to get going. Uh, so that was my concern with that one. Uh, you know, I, and, and I understand which I, when I first, my first cut, when I did this, just, I, I played with this over the weekend. I did the same thing you did the first time down the line. You say, okay, let me give everybody a little bit of a kiss. Uh, and it ends up, at least in my mind, I wasn't giving anybody the substantial amount of money they needed to go out and really make a difference in their organization. So my thought was, as opposed to doing that, let me take a look at the organizations that do have a support base, who in the past have been able to go out and raise funds uh, th through whatever programs they use for contributions. And if they've got the ability to do that, let me put them over here and keep them out of the first cut and then go back in and take a look at the organizations that have only been able to raise you know, $1,500 or $30,000 or whatever it is and try and give them a little bit more money to see if I can boost them up. So that was, I mean, and I, I understand exactly what you're trying to do, uh, but I don't know how we do that, right? I mean, and, and at least my, my my thinking was, let me let me target a couple of them. Let me see if we can get them up and do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll have to change something next year, but at least I'm gonna give these organizations a boost to go in and do what we need uh, and let's see if they can pull it off. So that was my reasoning for trying to just focus on a couple versus trying to spread it out to everybody. Good, right, wrong, or different? I don't know, Mike. That was just what I was thinking. Yeah, no, I hear you uh, loud and clear. Um, question to you. What do you think about a one-time increase in general grant funds to say 200000 instead of one fifty? dollars uh, Depends where it goes. Well, I guess that's always the case. Yeah. Um, Again, if I'm if I'm sending the money to the smaller organizations that help, I'm I'm back to the beginning of this program, which made it was an incubator fund, right? Let's let's give these people a little kiss, a little lift up, and see if they can't get on their own two feet, and in the long run, build an organization that can have some significant impact on our city. And that's I like that idea. Uh, these people that are running this stuff are smart. Uh, it'll give them a chance to see if, you know, to learn what the hell they got to do and see if, if they're, the effort they're making is going to be, a, you know, appreciated by the community. If it is, they'll be able to raise more money and next year they won't come back and see us. Um, Councilmember I, Pearson, I, um, yeah. Jesse Bobbitt has joined the meeting if you wanted to ask the question about the ball fields. Okay, yeah, one second, Jesse. Um, 
I hear what you're saying, but I look here and it seems like quite a few of the organizations, not all that you picked are decades old. Uh, Malibu Urgent Care, Malibu Search and Rescue, Malibu Little League, um, the Labor Exchange, um, Aquatics Foundation has been around a while. So, um, yeah, I, and, and you're right. I mean, some of those, but you know, the Labor Exchange, the Malibu Urgent Care, uh, again, they have a significant impact on the entire community. So we need them, right? I don't have a choice. I, they, uh, the better they are, the better we're going to be able to protect the residents of the city. So that was the thinking there. You're right. They've been around for a while. Whether they're going to be able to get support on their own, I don't know. I mean, I know that the urgent care center has been out doing, uh, you know, trying to get contributions for a long time. How successful they are, I don't know. Uh, but you're right. I mean, in some cases, the other, those ones you mentioned, uh, I did put some money in there only because I thought they had some greater benefits of the entire community. And they needed the money. Gotcha. Um, Jesse, are you there? I saw you. No, I don't. I, oh, there I am to. here. Yes, I apologize. I wanted to not, not take away from your conversation. So, <laughs> Thank you for joining. So one of the requests we got, I'm not sure if you were filled in on it, was for field upgrades for the Little League. And what caught my eye is that it's on city property so I wonder what the city's role is in field maintenance for the different programs, such as soccer, et cetera, that happen there. Yeah, we partner we partner with our, our organizations to do, um, obviously not work necessarily to that extent, but a lot of times smaller work each year to um, level grade the fields, to fix little issues that are popping up. Uh, this year, we've been working with Little League to um, install or update, expand the batting cage. So projects like that, we do actually um, assist with fairly regularly. Um, so when that happens, it, it depends. If it's work that we're doing, um, we'll take we'll basically work with them and take the lead on everything from putting an agreement together with a contractor to do that um, to facilitating the payment. If it's work that Little League is doing, uh, we still go through the agreement and insurance process to make sure everything's good, and then they'll handle the payment. It just depends on the project. but. We do work with them, for example, to do that um, fairly regularly. Okay. Um, but the watering, to redo the watering for various aspects of infield, outfield is outside the scope of the city? It, a lot of times it falls into what the need of the work is. If it's something that's that's just detrimental, right? Like the field isn't, is it, we're not going to be able to open the field because this isn't fixed, then we'll, we'll put funding like that towards it or do a project like that. Um, a lot of the times the work is more to uh, allow Little League to just have a better playing field based on what they want. Um, the fields are playable, uh, but it's just, it's just about improving the field and, and making it better. So uh, we do do work like that occasionally. It just, it's more on like if we need to do it versus just a nicety or, or a project that isn't, isn't, like I said, it's a necessity. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. I just want to get a better understanding of that. I appreciate it. Um, so, well, maybe, maybe I'm not quite done. Um, so they make a proposal to put in a different watering system. So then what happens if that goes sideways, what if that system breaks? What if it floods the field or, you know, how does the liability on all that work? And not that I'm overly worried about it, but I'm just trying to think of somebody spending money on our property right. for so, their benefit and right. you know, what happens there. So the way, the way it works in, in this instance and in, in most, in any project like that we do is that um, we require, uh, we have to be fully on board with it. And I'll give you an example. We're working on the batting cage. Um, we're working with our planning department to do an over-the-counter permit, make sure it's all within what, what what's required from our municipal code. And then that work is completed um, with an agreement that we work to make sure is exactly what is needed to work on our property. And then in theory, that becomes city property there. Um, Yes, Little League in this in that instance is the only one who uses it. So, it, but it still would once it's on city property like that, it, it 
it has to, it just has how it has to be. With the irrigation system, we would work with them to make sure it ties into our irrigation system because we have a very specific system that uh, measures, knows when rain's happening. And I, I'm messing up the word, but hydro evaporation, you know, there's different times of year where water doesn't soak into the ground as, as efficiently as it does at other times of the year. So this system takes all of that into account. So this would be tied into our system and, and we would make sure that that's, that's the case. We, we couldn't do it any other way because we have to have control over that in the end. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Jesse. I appreciate it. Hey, Steve, what do you think on Malibu Little League for field upgrade that that goes in a, a, our undesignated fund budget as opposed to a grant? I, I look like you. I played Little League when I was a kid. I loved it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, me I, spent, I spent my summers riding my bicycle around the baseball field so we could, you know, to play. So I, I'm a big fan of. And, and I, every now and then when I walk my dog, I see the kids and these kids are good. I mean, you know, you know there's some talent out there. Um, so I, as long as we can get them some money, I'm happy. If you got a better way to do it. So maybe on that one, um, maybe we can agree to revisit that. I believe it's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I got no problem doing that. Okay. Okay. Let me ask uh, you a question. What total number you had was how much? What, was, what did your amount total to? 223. Okay. With everything that I ran through with you. Okay. And here's the question. If we increase it, is that a permanent increase every year? No, I mean, I'm thinking it'll specifically stay to one time just because of the need coming out of what we've been through. It seems like I've never seen more mental health and, and just program. I mean, programs, are, everything got thrown into just disarray. And, you know, we have, I, I don't want to be all spend happy um, but at the same time, we have our you know historic reserve, and it seems like maybe we're not completely losing our minds to throw a little more money at the community this year, you know, and, and kick in an extra 50k. And I realize I need to make cuts to this year. I get that. This is sort of my rough start to a degree, but uh, that's just kind of you know that's kind of how I see it this year. So you would pump it up to 200,000 a one time a one time increase. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm just asking, I'm not trying to. Yeah, I mean, for floating in money in the future, great. That's fine then too. But at this point, yeah, just a one time to try and kickstart the community because, uh, you know, it's, it's, we've been through a lot. Okay. So, and you would, it would, we crank it up to another 50 grams to 200 K. So what would you change in your list there to get you down to 200? Do you know? And I, and I'm understanding these are not easy decisions, Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not even close. like I said, man, I spent yesterday doing, I got four different sheets here about I came up with numbers and none of them were that satisfying, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, you know, hmm. Yeah, you just can't win, can you? Um, give me a second to review here. Give me one second to play with. Yeah, another. No, we got time. I mean, I'm not. There's not a hurry here. We can. Just wanna. If you want to go home and think about it, we can. We can meet again. To, you know, I mean, this is this is important stuff, right? They, these are organizations that, that do provide a significant benefit to the city. So it's something we are, you know, we do want to think about. So that yeah. I, I mean, it's up to you. I'm, I will support whatever you want to do. Mary, Mary what is our, our deadline on being done with this? I know it's generally all done in one swoop. Um, what are our options on it being, you know? It's, it's presented with the budget. Um, what you could do since you are meeting tomorrow is if you, Ah. And come to a conclusion. <laughs> Continue this. Okay. Um, well, well, wait a minute. I take that back because. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not, not on agenda. the agenda. Yeah, it's not, agenda. it's not on the agenda. Sorry about that. Yeah, but we could probably meet sometime. You know, it, it's got to be presented on the budget meeting the end of the month, right, Mary? Um, that's, that's the target. Right? Can you confirm the scheduling? I'm I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. I think I think the budget's going at the end of the month. 
the budget public hearing is on May the 23rd. Okay. And so we typically will um, have our final recommendations included in that uh, two weeks prior. Okay, so we got it. We got a couple of days, Mikey, and, you know, and if we have to get together on a Zoom meeting, we can probably do that pretty quickly, I would think. Do we have to agendize that if we do that? Yes. Yes, um, you do, but you only need 24 hour noticing for a special meeting. So ah, if we were cool. to continue this item, okay. we would just be, you know, bringing the same agenda back. Up to you, Mikey. All right, give, just give me a sec here. It's one thing I noticed, Mary, uh, I would add, or Ruthie or whoever, is that it wasn't consistent in the reporting on what, what was given last year. Um, that made it a little tricky in some places. And I would spend time searching around for a few that uh, they didn't either use the form we have or they didn't fill it out all the way. Um, so, and for some reason, I know I saved my spreadsheet, couldn't find it, of course, just to add to the drama on that, just sort of helpful to sort of see where the mindset was, not that you don't change it, but, um, I got the numbers from last year. If you a listing them. of what the individual organizations were awarded last year. Yeah. They received an award. I, can, I found we're most going of them, to continue the all. item. We, we can add that to the. Or I can share them on my screen right now if you'd like. Yeah, I got them. Yeah, if you want them, Mikey. Okay, yeah, if you want to share that, that'd be great. That'd be helpful to me. Thanks for being prepared. All right, Ruthie. Is Wait. that uh, technology is technology is us? That's good. Hang on, my screen's doing something funny. So give me a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, Okay, just fixing some things here. Okay, this is no urgent care. I'm hurrying along here as best I can. One was missing. Almost there. Okay. Um, thank you. You're welcome. I just wanted to note for the record that this is the um, from the budget that was adopted last year. This is that particular memo, and we'll make sure to reflect that in the permanent record. Thank you. Oh, how did I not? Okay, my bad. Page 22. Okay, I obviously lost focus at about page 21. I'm guessing. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> with a, I do want to, with a very small binder, by the way. <laughs> If, you know, if you threw it at somebody, you'd be charged with murder. Uh, <laughs> okay, one sec then. All right, 
Well, I lowered my numbers to two, two thousand, two, two hundred thousand. I ain't, I ain't no 137 though, that's for sure. And I'm still pretty much in the same vein. So what'd you change? Uh, I put Adams House at 8,500. I'm still curious where their state funding level's at. I don't know the answer, but obviously there's an issue there. Uh, Boys and Girls Club to 80,000. California Wildlife to 5,000. Malibu Elementary to 18,000. Webster to 9,000. I think that did it. Let me ask you a question. Who needs yeah. the money more? Webster and, and Malibu Elementary or the Boys and Girls Club? And I'm not trying to pick on the Boys and Girls Club. I mean, you know, they, they are an outstanding organization. But, but they have got a lot of funding. They got grants. They, so they've got money in their pocket that they can do their job with. I'm looking at these other guys that don't. Right. And, how, and it, like I said, for one year, I think it's worth giving them the boost to get what they need. It, well, like I said, we're, if we. And if I took 30 grand out of the Boys and Girls Club to get to your 200 number, uh, I wouldn't be sending any of them to the soup kitchen. They've got they got money that will continue their efforts. Uh, they're still getting money from the city and they, you know, they get they get eight hundred thousand dollars out of the, the uh, chili cook off. They get another. 50 or 100 grand out of the, the library fund. So it's not like we're ignoring them. And like I said, I just, I'd like to see us help some of the other groups. I just think they need the help. Yeah, I think there's a lot of need. I mean, I, you know, I'm close enough to the Boys and Girls Club to see the impact. And, uh, and it's just, it's overwhelming. I mean, they are the mental health provider among other support services for the youth and families in Malibu. I mean, what they're able to do in a case of emergency, as they did with Woolsey, um, the amount of, uh, of you know, service they provide are, are known, not just in Malibu. This program has established, uh, you know, a, a benchmark for other, other boys and girls clubs everywhere. Um, their Youth of the Year program alone is, is mind-blowing. So I, I find myself very concerned uh, naturally and at this point for the, the youth of Malibu and what they've been going through and where they're at and these support services are so wide ranging and the impact is so huge that um, that's just how I how I see it and um, you know at every at every school level I just see what uh, you know Patrick at the high school is going through and all the other schools and it's just you know it was really highlighted yesterday at the Dolphin Awards um, by some of the kids there and some of the educators there. And uh, I, I just don't know anything in my mind in some ways more important than the health and growth of our youth um, in this city. So that that's that's I don't, I don't argue with that. I just think there are different ways to get different ways to get there. I got you. And I don't have a perfect answer other than this is how I see it at this point i'm not sure where else to go i'm not you know i'm and i'm uncomfortable right now i still have no money for malibu little league in there and i think it's a great program so i i'm not winning at this point you know i'm uh, wondering about you know city budget on that one i'm trying to find all sorts of ways to to deliver help yeah ruthie um i just want to say that we definitely will um investigate the support that we can provide for the irrigation system for the Little League via the, um, the city's um, budget. And we'll also circle back around and talk about the uh, request from the um, Arts Commission as well. So uh, just to let you know, those two items will be in our conversation for tomorrow. And then um, I do have a question though, my uh, Council Member Pearson, I am not coming up with $200,000. And, um, you know, I was taking copious notes and I'm just wondering if we could um, run through them very quickly because yeah. Yeah. my tally is less than 190,000 right now based on your recommendation. Ruthie, so I have, I'm in balance with this 200,000 as oh, well. Okay. So. That's good. I probably changed something and didn't update you. I tried to highlight them in yellow, but um, Adamson house, 8,500. 
Boys and Girls Club at 80,000. California Wildlife at 5,000. Malibu Elementary at 18. Whoa, whoa, you're, you're way ahead of me here, Mikey. Oh, I know. I was just going to the ones I changed. Uh, yeah, you're still ahead of me. <laughs> you know, uh, excuse me. I have them all listed with what each of you suggested. Would it be helpful if I reviewed that? Because it would certainly help me minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll just go down the list. The Adams and House Foundation, uh, Councilmember Yearing suggested 10,000 and Councilmember Pearson 8,500. American Tortoise Rescue, you both agreed with 2,500. Aurelia Foundation, Councilmember Pearson recommended 2,000. Boys and Girls Club of Malibu, Councilmember Pearson suggested 80,000. California Wildlife Center, Councilmember Pearson suggested 5,000. Call to Peace Foundation, Councilmember Pearson suggested 2,000, Councilmember Ewing 5,000. Cancer Support Community of Los Angeles, Councilmember Pearson 1,000. Cavallo Foundation, Councilmember Yearing, 10,000, Councilmember Pearson, 2,500. Children's Life Saving Foundation, Councilmember Pearson, 5,000. Do Good Bus, Councilmember Pearson, 2,000. Uh, Emily Shane Foundation, Councilmember how, how, how much was the Do Good Bus? Uh, 2,000. Okay, gotcha. Emily Shane um, Foundation. I'm sorry, Mary, for whatever reason, your audio is not super clear. So maybe like get closer to the mic or something like that. Okay, sorry about that. I had problems with headphones, so I'm just using the speaker in the laptop. Okay, um, Emily Shane Foundation, Council Member Pearson, 2000. Esperance Center, Council Member Pearson, 2000. Um, FindHomelessPeople.org oh, and, and the BP. Very key foster above, you both did, did not suggest any funding. Malibu Aquatics Foundation, Council Member Yearing 10,000, Council Member Pearson 1,000. Malibu Arts Foundation, Council Member Yearing 10,000, Council Member Pearson 2,500. Malibu Community Labor Exchange, both of you agreed at 10,000. Malibu Elementary School, Council Member Pearson 18,000. Malibu Film Foundation, neither of you suggested funded uh, grant. Malibu Friends of Music, Council Member Yearing 5,000, Council Member Pearson 1,000. Malibu Little League, Council Member Yearing 20,000, Council Member Pearson suggested we revisit that with the budget. Malibu Search and Rescue, Council Member Yearing 20,000, Council Member Pearson 12,500. Malibu Urgent Care, Council Member Yearing 10,000, Council Member Pearson 5,000. Malibu Women's Club, Council Member Yearing 7,500, Council Member Pearson 2,500. Manta Publications, Council Member, Pe or Council Member Yearing 3,000. Malibu. Wait, or, mine was 3,000 too. Oh, okay. Thank you. Meals on Wheels West, Council Member Pearson. 3,500. Poison Free Malibu, you both agreed at 5,000. Sea Save Foundation, Council Member Yearing 5,000, Council Member Pearson 2,500. The Shark Fund, Council Member Pearson 10,000, and Webster Elementary PTA, Council Member Pearson 9,000. Correct. What does that get you, Mary, in terms of the total? Um, I don't have totals, but I believe Renee was totaling them. It's 200,000. I had missed the 3,000 for Manta Publications, um, uh, Councilmember Pearson. So now it's an even 200,000, your recommendations. And what about Councilmember Yearings? Councilmember Yearings, 133,000. Yeah, I was going to take the extra 17 or give it to the school. So I, I was going to spend that. I just left that off the, the chart there for a moment. All right, let me take one last look at this thing. You know, my only concern doing it this way, Mike, you giving some of these organizations not even enough money to do a good mailing list, all right, to you know buy the stamps and do a mailing program to try and raise some funds. And that 
concerns me because that's what that's what I want them to do. That's I want them to become more self-sufficient. All right, poison free, five thousand man publication, number one is club. Urgent care. Louis, friends of more music, middle school, elementary school, labor exchange, got 10, arts foundation. Malibu Aquatic, give a thousand bucks. Do you think that's enough for them? I mean, you know, but I listened to that woman who, who did the presentation. Uh, it seems to be a hell of a good program, right? I mean, I love it. I mean, that's the, the conundrum we find ourselves in. There's a lot of great programs here. New yeah. programs, proven programs, important, you know, I, but yeah, I don't disagree with anything. You know, just again, it's it's the process that says if, if I don't put enough into it, I'm really not making a difference, right? All I'm doing is spreading a little rainwater around, but nothing's really going to grow that much. You know, I'll tell you, I still think I could take some money out of the Boys and Girls Club, not hurt them, and spread it out to some of the or other organizations who could use it more. And I think I've done a better job of expanding the number of organizations in Malibu that can help us. And I don't think I'm hurting the Boys and Girls Club at all. That's one man's opinion. I got it. I don't know how to reconcile that. I definitely, I don't see it that way. So I'm not, maybe... Uh... Maybe at this point we're going to have to take a break and come back and revisit this. I don't, I don't, uh, give me a chance to, uh, maybe reach out to some of these organizations and have a little deeper chat. I'm not sure. You want to do that today? You want to, you want to stop now and come back another day? What, what do you Yeah, suggest? I think we probably need to, cause I don't think, uh, you know, this is a hard, this is hard to do. It's, we never give ourselves a chance to kind of think about it and go through it. We always just give it a one-time stab um and the last thing i want is more meetings but i don't i don't think we're going to close this gap today here okay um, if you're going to do that I, let me suggest i you know you just could, my thought yeah no I, I don't disagree if you could reach out to the boys and girls club see what they think i mean if they've got oh, the ability of course. Of if they've course. got the ability to give us a little more leeway to help some of the other organizations i think that would be something good for the city uh malibu urgent care you know again that, that is our lifeline to medical care here in Malibu. I mean, I, you know, they, they, they ask for 10, uh, maybe five will do it for them, but boy, I should like to make sure they are <laughs> as robust as they can be because if I get sick, uh, they're down the hill from me. <laughs> uh, I couldn't agree more. I've been there many times over the years. Right. No, no, no disagreement on any of these, to be honest. All right. All right, so let, you pick a time you want to get back together, Mike. Yeah, I may do the same thing. Talk to some of these folks and see what we can come up with. Okay, do we want to try and set that date now, staff, or do we want to come back with that date? If you have your calendars with you, we can, I can at least look at to see if there's anything available. The only thing I'll make it easy on you is I'm not free till May 17th for a variety of reasons, all accumulating in no opening till May 17th. What's, what day is the 17th, Mike? It's a Tuesday. Let's do it on Tuesday the 17th. Uh, actually, on Tuesday the 17th has a couple of other meetings. Um, okay. how about a, well, how about unless what? we could possibly possibly do it in the morning, except um, Steve would not, uh, City Manager McClary would not be available. He's got a COG meeting. But in the afternoon, we've got a homelessness task force meeting. And in the evening, we've got a Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. So... How about Wednesday? How about Wednesday? Wednesday looks much better. 
Wednesday. Wednesday. You could do it morning or afternoon. I'd have to do afternoon. I'll take the afternoon on Wednesday also. I can do any time after two o'clock. I'll, I'll make that work for me also. Uh, okay. So. What time are you thinking? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. You want to just do two? Uh, may I ask for some clarification while you're setting that date? Yes. So a comment, actually, and then clarification. Um, we we typically notice and, and put all materials out for the public hearing uh, well in advance of that. So we, we will still want to send um, a published uh, proposed okay. budget for that public hearing prior to the to the 18th. And we can do so um, with just a, a placeholder and then perhaps some some supplemental materials after your meeting on the 18th, we can publish uh, the 19th or 20th, but um, well within the um, timeline, I think, for um, the public hearing. Just When's the public the, hearing? The 23rd. 23rd. So, so I still think we'll be okay um, to be able to, okay. to publish something. But in, in the interim, I'm wondering if there's consensus to um, increase the, the amount to for one time to 200,000 so that at least the numbers that are included in the published materials that, that has that placeholder um, accurately reflect the intention for your investment. Um, other, otherwise, that might just throw it just to let you know, might throw a little I'll bit. Make, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to do that, Ruthie. Okay. I Thank think you. you're right. I, let's, yeah, let's, in the long run, that's the number we know we want to have available. So, Mikey, you okay with doing that? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, Council Member Hearing? Yes. Council Member Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. God damn. Okay, so we're going to continue this meeting, right? We're not, we're not. Yeah. So we will adjourn to Wednesday, May 18th at 2 p.m. Okay, I make a motion to adjourn to Wednesday, May 18th at 2 p.m. I'll second. Council Member Yearing? Yes. Council Member Pearson? Yes. Motion carries and, and listen, we are adjourned. All the help, everybody who spoke today, all your help, the staff's help. I mean, this is, this is, interesting stuff. I, I do appreciate the work you guys have done and help us get to where the hell we are. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who spoke. Thank you to everyone who applied. Thank you, staff. All right, guys. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <Yep. laughs>